Welcome to the seventh Viewfind tutorial video. This is a continuation of last month's video about uh, OAI PMH, where we learned how to harvest XML records using tools bundled with Viewfind. This month, we are going to look at what to do with those records once we have them, uh, and to talk about indexing XML generally. Uh, the first thing that I should emphasize is that Mark XML is a special exception. Uh, you can use Viewfind standard Mark indexing tools, which we talked about several months ago, to import binary Mark and Mark XML. And that is much easier than trying to use uh, the tools we talk about today to index Mark, which is, of course, extremely complex. So don't overdo your, your work by uh, trying to load Mark using XSLT there are other tools available. But for everything else, uh, what we talk about today should be helpful. So I've already mentioned XSLT, so that was a bit of a spoiler. Uh, Viewfind uses XSLT for loading XML data into Solar. So uh, first I should talk a little bit about what XSLT is. Uh, it's short for Extensible Style Sheet Language Transformations. Uh, and it's a declarative programming language where you build an XML document that tells the XSLT engine how to transform one XML document into another XML document. Uh, there are several versions of XSLT. I believe the language is up to version 3.0 right now. Uh, but PHP's built-in XSLT processor only supports version 1.0 of the language. Uh, obviously, I'm not going to teach you XSLT today in five minutes. It's uh, a bit of a project to learn. So if you do go off and uh, read a tutorial about it, be sure you find one about the original version of the language and not the later ones that add a lot of additional features. Um, it's Perhaps a little unfortunate that PHP doesn't support newer XSLT versions, uh, but this is compensated for quite a bit by the fact that there are bindings between XSLT and PHP. So you can write custom functions in PHP and use them in your XSLT. So whenever there's missing functionality in XSLT, you can usually cover that gap with a PHP function. And Viewfind comes packed with uh, a number of example functions for uh, common needs uh, and lots of examples of XSLT as well. So for today's example, uh, I'm going to harvest an OJS uh, journal called Expositions, which is hosted at Villanova. OJS is the open journal system and open source uh, journal hosting platform and it supports OAI PMH. So this is a good example of a real world system that you can harvest from and index into Viewfind. And Viewfind includes uh, some sample configurations and an XSLT for harvesting from o OJS and indexing the resulting data. So again, it's, it's a pretty good, simple real world example. So I'm going to go to the command line where I'm in my Viewfind home directory and just show a couple of files to give you a taste of what this all looks like. So all of Viewfind sample XSLT sheets are in the import slash XSL subdirectory of Viewfind Home. Uh, and as you can see, we actually have three different flavors of OJS uh, XSLTs. We have nlmojs.xsl, which uses the National Library of Medicine's metadata standard, which is a bit richer than the default uh, OAI DC Dublin Core data. Uh, but for today's demonstration, I'm just going to use uh, OJS XSL, which um, indexes the Dublin Core. We also have OJS multi-record, which I will show you a little later. Uh, so stay tuned for that. But to get things started, I'm just going to show you what the OJS.XSL looks like. As I mentioned, uh, an XSLT is just an XML document. Um, and it really works by pattern matching uh, using XPath, which is a way of specifying particular locations within an XML document. 
So within an XSLT, anything that you see that's prefixed with XSL colon is an XSLT command, and anything else is actually output that the XSLT is going to create. So the XSLTs in Viewfinder are all designed to create solar documents for indexing, uh, which always have a, a top level add tag that contains doc tags that contain fields that need to be added to the solar documents. So the XSLTs are mostly defining solar fields and containing rules uh, using XSLT to fill those fields with the appropriate data. So for example, to get our unique ID, we're pulling from an XSL tag, I mean an XML tag called identifier. We have a hard-coded record format. So this is just putting this literal value into every record, which would enable us to create an OJS specific uh, record driver if we wanted to. Uh, we have an all fields field to index all of the text within the XML document, which uses some uh, XSLT functions to extract that text. We use variables, uh, which XSLT supports, to pass in institution and collection uh, values. I will show you momentarily how these variables get set. And XSLT supports looping for multi-values. So for example, this code here populates uh, viewfinds language field by looping through every Dublin core language tag in the document and for any non-empty values. Uh, it calls a PHP function, which translates the strings from two-letter or three-letter codes into uh, full textual representations. Again, I obviously can't go into great depth about how, how all of this works here, but hopefully this, this gives you a little taste, and if you go off and read an XSLT tutorial or two, it should make even more sense. So the XSLT is only part of what Viewfind needs to do XML indexing. Uh, the other part being a properties file for the import tool, which tells it uh, not only which XSLT to use, but also what custom PHP functions to make available and what values to set for any custom variables that are used within the XSLT. So let's look at uh, ojs.properties file that goes with that XSLT I just showed you, and all of the import properties files live in the import directory. And they all contain lots of comments explaining in detail what all of the settings mean. But just to go through the highlights, of course, there's an XSLT setting. This tells us which uh, XSLT to use. And uh, as I teased earlier, you see with OJS, you actually have a choice of the regular OJS.XSL, which will index one a Dublin core record at a time, or the OJS multi-record.XSL, which can index a grouping of uh, Dublin core records all in one file. Um, the multi-record is much faster. It just requires some extra work when you harvest. And I'm going to show you how to use both of these today. We'll start one at a time, and we'll work our way up to multi-record. Uh, you also can expose specific PHP functions directly into the XSLT by just creating a list of functions here. Uh, by default, none of the package configurations do this, but it is a possibility if you want to make PHP functions available to your XSLT. You can also create a class full of custom functions and uh, expose all of them uh, to your XSLT. And most of Viewfind's examples just use a Viewfind XSLT import Viewfind class full of static functions uh, for exposing custom behavior, like that string mapping I showed you in the, the language import. Moving on down, um, there's the ability to uh, pass the custom classes to XSLT using their fully qualified names with the namespace, but all of Viewfind's configurations truncate off the namespace and just expose the base class name 
which makes the XSLT a little shorter and more readable. So every time I call a viewfind function, I just say viewfind colon colon function name instead of having to type viewfind slash XSLT slash import slash viewfind. So that's the truncate custom class. Finally, there's a parameters section, and this is where you set the values that are exposed as variables to the XSLT. So uh, I showed you earlier that the institution and collection fields uh, in the solar index are getting set to variables, and the variables are set here. So by default, you're going to get institution set to my university and collection set to OJS. So before I can show you any more of the actual importing process, we're going to need some records to play with. So let me set up uh, the OAI PMH harvesting for expositions. Uh, I'm going to edit my local harvest OAI.ini file, which we set up on last month's video, and just go to the bottom and create a new section. I'm going to call it expositions so that when I run the harvest, all my records will go into a directory called expositions under my local harvest directory. The URL is http expositions.journals.villanova.edu slash OAI. Metadata prefix is OAIDC because we want to harvest the basic Dublin core. And now some new settings that I didn't show you last time. First of all, Inject ID equals identifier. Uh, as I mentioned uh, when we talked about OAI PMH, uh, when we harvest using that protocol, we get both records and header data. Viewfind needs a unique identifier for everything it indexes. And the Dublin core that we get back from OAI PMH doesn't necessarily have any kind of identifier in it, but the OAI PMH headers will always have a unique ID for every record. So by setting inject ID equals identifier here, we're telling the harvester, take the ID from the OAI PMH header, create an identifier tag inside the XML that you're going to harvest and save to disk, put the ID value in there. And this is how the XSLT I showed you earlier was able to pull an ID from the identifier tag and use it in the index. So this is a really important feature of uh, ViewFind's Harvester uh, that enables you to harvest just about anything and reliably be able to index it in solar with a uh, unique ID. But the uh, IDs that you get back from OAI PMH are often extremely verbose and they would make for ugly and unreadable URLs. So we also have some settings called ID search and ID replace, which let us use regular expressions to transform the identifiers at the same time that we're injecting them. So uh, in the case of OJS, uh, the IDs have this long prefix, OAI colon ojs.pkp.sfu.ca colon, we don't want to show that to our users. So we're going to replace it with expositions dash. So this way, everything that we index from expositions will have a distinctive prefix on the ID, so we don't have to worry about expositions records clashing with records from other sources. Uh, the other thing about this is that the, there are several slashes in some of the IDs, and slashes in IDs can create problems uh, because slashes have a special meaning in URLs and it requires extra configuration of your web server to make things behave nicely. So let's just get rid of all the slashes as well. So we're going to say id search bracket bracket equals pipe slash pipe id replace bracket bracket equals dash. So let me explain all of this in whole now that I've typed it all in. ID search and ID replace are repeatable settings in the file. You can have as many pairs of search and replace as you need to transform your IDs. You just have to be sure to put the brackets on the end of ID search and ID replace so that when the configuration is read, the multiple values are processed correctly. And ID search, as I mentioned, is a regular expression. 
It uses the Perl style regular expressions uh, supported in PHP. Uh, and those regular expressions require you to start and end the expression for the pattern you're matching with the same character. So in this first example where we're getting rid of the OAI OJS prefix, I surrounded it with matching forward slashes because that is a fairly common convention for regular expressions. But for the second pair where we want to turn forward slashes into dashes, I can't surround the forward slash with forward slashes. That would confuse the uh, regular expression engine. So I just used pipe characters instead so that it has matching characters on the beginning and end of the expression that don't conflict with the internal part. Uh, I could have chosen a different character here. It doesn't really matter, but I think pipes look pretty. So there you go. So with all of that in place, we're now ready to harvest expositions. So now I just need to run uh, viewfinds OAI PMH harvest to get the expositions content. So I run PHP harvest slash harvest OAI.php and I tell it I want to harvest expositions. And now I wait and it pulls down a whole bunch of records. 285 records, one for each record in expositions. Each of them is an XML file and they are all in my local harvest expositions directory. So now we're ready to put all these pieces together. We have a directory full of uh, XML files in Dublin core format. We have an XSLT and we have a properties file. So there is a command line tool that comes with viewfind called import xsl.php. So it's php import slash import dash xsl.php. And this has a nice minus minus test dash only mode that you can use if you want to see what it does without actually writing anything into solar. So I'm going to use that for the first run here just to demonstrate what's happening. So the first parameter to this command is the name of an XML file. So I'm going to choose just one of these, these files more or less at random. So I chose local harvest expositions 15886851192 expositions article 2486. Uh, that big number at the front is actually just a timestamp. The, the harvester puts the time of harvest on every file it downloads. The second parameter is the name of the properties file I've configured to do the import. And I don't need to tell it the path to that file, I just need to tell it the file name. Because like many things in viewfind, what it's going to do is it's first going to look in viewfind local dir slash import to see if we have a local customized properties file. If it doesn't find that, it's then going to fall back and look in uh, viewfind home slash import and use the default one. So since I haven't customized anything yet, it's just going to, to go for the defaults. So I'm going to run this command and it outputs a solar document, which it created by transforming the input. So as you can see, like in all fields, it's just a whole bunch of text. It extracted all the free text from the XML, taking the tags off of it. There's that hard-coded record format of OJS. The ID is that identifier that we uh, injected. And as you can see, it's prefixed with expositions like we told it to be. And the slash that would have been here has become a dash. So all my regular expressions worked. And here's my university and OJS that came in from those variables that were set in the properties file and a whole bunch of other stuff. So let's repeat that command, but just take the test only off to actually index it into solar. The XML import does not immediately commit changes to solar. So if you just run this command and try to search for a record, it won't show up instantly. Uh, the way to ensure that solar is all the way up to date is to run the util slash commit.php script to send a solar commit. So I'm gonna do that just so I can demonstrate that this actually worked. So now if I go to my browser, uh, I loaded up this search for all records uh, prior to indexing and you can see there 
there were 250 records at that time, but if I repeat the search now, there are now 251. And as you can see in the institution facet, we have one from my university, which was what came in from that ojs.properties file. So if I click on that to filter down, here is the nonviolence article that we indexed from the XML. So that's really great, but we have more than 200 of these records. We don't want to have to index them by hand one at a time. Fortunately, there is a script called harvest slash batch import xsl.sh, which will take the name of a directory under your local harvest path and the name of a property file and it will loop through and index every single file in that directory uh, using that configuration thus saving you lots and lots of typing and as it does the indexing it also creates a subdirectory of your harvest directory called processed and it moves those files into the process directory so at the end of this process after all 200 plus files have been indexed uh, i should have an empty expositions directory with a process subdirectory containing all the hundreds of records that got indexed the batch process is also smart enough that if anything should go wrong during the index, it will not move files that failed to import correctly. So if I had one bad record in this batch, all the good ones would get successfully indexed and moved into the processed directory, but the bad one would stay there. Uh, and I could then, for example, run that test mode I showed you on the one record to see exactly what the error message is that was preventing the transformation or to see, oh, there's a missing required field or something uh, to troubleshoot that and fix it. The other thing that will be left in the expositions directory uh, is a file uh, called lastharvest.txt, which will just contain the date of the last time we ran the OAI PMH harvester, which allows incremental updates uh, which I believe I mentioned last time, but that means that if I ran the uh, harvest again tomorrow and two new records had been added to OJS, it would only harvest those two and then I could index those and I wouldn't have to re-index the other 200. So now the, the index process has completed and if I just do a a directory listing of local harvest expositions. You'll see that I'm not lying to you. All that's left here is a last harvest.txt and a process directory. So let's go back over to viewfinding our browser and refresh these results. And sure enough, here are 285 records. They're all searchable. They all have links back to OJS to read the full article. Success. But you may have noticed I had to ramble for quite a lot of time while those 200 records indexed because indexing things one at a time actually takes quite a while. And if you have thousands or tens of thousands of records, it's even worse. And that is why the multi-record function I talked about is really handy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to remove the whole local harvest expositions directory so we can start over and I can show you how much faster this is if we do records in batches instead of one at a time. So first, I'm going to edit my OAI harvesting configuration uh, in local harvest OAI.ini. All I need to do is add one more setting at the bottom of this called combine records equals true. And what that is going to do is tell the harvester, instead of writing one Dublin core record into each file, you want to create one file for every batch of records that come back over OAI PMH, and you're going to wrap them in a tag called collection. If you want to use a different tag name, there's another setting you can use for that. But for this example, just turning on combined records and accepting the default tag name of collection is good enough. 
The other thing we need to do is set up the ojs.properties file to use the combined XSLT file. So let's copy the default import ojs.properties into local import, because as with everything else, files inside local are going to override defaults in the core code. And let's edit local import ojs.properties. And I'm just going to comment out ojs.xsl and uncomment ojs multi record dot xsl uh, so let's just take a quick look at that other xslt to see what the differences are so i'm going to edit import slash xsl slash ojs multi record dot xsl and so this uses template matching so it's going to match the top level collection tag and then it's going to loop through the collection looking for OAI DC and apply templates to each of them in turn. And then there's this OAI DC template and this code is quite similar to the single record code. Uh, it just matches within the scope of a single OAIDC instead of globally looking for particular tags. And this is really probably a better way to approach all XSLT writing. The difference between multi-record and single record is that I wrote the single record one when I didn't know what I was doing and somebody else who's better at XSLT than me wrote the multi-record one. So, I welcome contributions of multi-record import uh, scripts for other uh, metadata formats as well. Um, but I do offer the single and multi-record options because there are scenarios where each can be useful. We'll talk about that a little more momentarily. In any case, I've now showed you the multi-record XSLT. I've reconfigured the OAI PMH harvester to harvest in groups. And I've configured OJS properties to use the multi-record XSLT. So everything should be aligned correctly. So let's run the OAI PMH harvester again. So php harvest underscore oai.php. Tell it to harvest expositions. And the harvest should take the same amount of time. We're still harvesting the same 285 records. But if I look inside local harvest expositions this time, there are only three files there because the OAI server provided us with three batches of records and each of those got saved to a single file. And now if I were to run the uh, single file import xsl.php script in test only mode on one of these files, you will see that uh, the output is much longer than before because now instead of just having one record transformed to solar, we now have a whole collection of records, hundred of them to be precise. So it goes on and on and on. But the advantage of this is you remember how long it took to batch import the expositions when every file contained only one record. Let me show you how much faster it is when there are only three files containing 100 records each. Harvest slash batch import XSL, expositions directory, ojs.properties configuration file. One, two, three, we're done. So that was a dramatic improvement in performance. The only disadvantage to doing things this way uh, that I can see is that as I mentioned, the uh, import script will skip files that fail the import. So if I had one corrupted record in this OJS instance and I ran this batch import, one of these three files would fail and I would know there was a problem with one of the hundred records within that file, but it would be hard to figure out which one had caused the problem. So doing single record importing may be valuable uh, for troubleshooting purposes, if nothing else. And I would suggest that if you do a batched import and you run into trouble, 
uh, try doing a single import. That will probably help you pinpoint the causes of your problems. I should also note that, as I said, uh, most of the example XSLTs are things I wrote that are designed for a single record at a time. Uh, there's still some work to be done creating batch import uh, XSLTs for all the formats. Uh, I showed you OJS because that's one where this work has already been done. Uh, if anyone needs multi-record import for another format, that's something I would welcome contributions of so that it could be shared with uh, everyone else using the project. Uh, and I expect that over time, our repertoire will uh, expand and improve. So that's it for this month. Uh, thank you for listening, and we'll have more next time.